Dear friends, I hope you have been watching all the previous videos on Everyday at 6 American Literature. We are now uh, discussing the chapters from the second volume of the Encyclopedia and today's topic is Jewish American Writers. Did you know that the 1950s was the golden age of Jewish American literature? There was a great flowering of Jewish American writers. Almost all the major writers were Jews and they won all the major awards. And this was a very great time when the Jews were feeling like they are also Americans. What are the themes in Jewish American writing? If you talk about them as a genre, they should have some common themes. Well. Holocaust was not one of the major themes of the American writers. Holocaust was a theme for the European writers. But all the Jewish American writers wrote about existential angst, existential problems, the limitations of an individual in the society. And also they dealt with all these issues in a very comic manner. Comedy was a very important uh, element dark comedy sometimes now one of the earliest Jewish American writers was Bernard Malamud Bernard Malamud was a major short story writer but he also wrote novels and he is sometimes prescribed in universities also have you heard of the Pulitzer Prize winner The Fixer The Fixer is about anti-semitism in Russia it is a story of Yaakov. Yaakov is the Jewish protagonist and it is based on an actual infamous trial that happened in Russia. Anti-Semitism, you know, is the hatred of the Jews that had spread across Europe at this time. And there is another novel which is Dubin's Lives. Now all these novels are uh, you employing a realistic manner, okay? It is realism that he employs here and many short story collections also. In uh, the short stories and novels of Bernard Malamud, you will see the grim realities of the cities. The city's squalor and misery uh, is a theme in many Jewish American writers, including the next writer, Saul Bellow. Bernard Malamud wrote in a very emotionally charged style, but Saul Bellow wrote in a very humorous and satirical style. Saul Bellow was associated with three cities. One, he was born in Quebec, in Montreal, I think, in Canada, but he did not write about it. The two cities that he wrote about are Chicago and New York. Well, Saul Bellow traveled widely. All those experiences you can see in his novels. And he won the 1976 Nobel Prize in Literature. I already told you that his novels are very comic. But there is one more side to his novels. His protagonists are very philosophical. And also he talked about the disorienting nature of the modern civilization in which the protagonist is often trapped. One of the early novels of Saul Bellow is Dangling Man. A man who is neither here nor there dangling. That is actually a metaphor that you can see in most of his novels. Dangling Man. Another early novel is The Victim. But... His famous novels began with the Adventures of Augie March. Adventures of Augie March begins with a famous line, I am American, Chicago born. Here is the Jewish protagonist saying he is American. And uh, there are many Kafkaesque elements also in these works. Uh, you see, for example, in Augie March, a lot of misadventures of this boy Augie March in Chicago as he is uh, growing into maturity. This is a Bildungsroman as well as picaresque novel. And Augie is traveling, not only in Chicago he is, but he is also traveling to Mexico and then to Europe. All these are uh, symptomatic of the Western civilization and its problems. The next novel, Adventures of Augie March is 1953. The next novel is 1956, Seize the Day. That's actually his fourth novel. Seize the Day is uh, full of 
uh, flashbacks. You actually see only one day in the life of the protagonist. But uh, through flashbacks, you see a lot of things that happened to him before. And uh, he is a man who is disconnected with his uh, Judaic traditions. And uh, he has lost all his respectability. But at the end, he's embracing his Jewish uh, culture. Henderson, the Rain King, is a very unusual novel because here Bellows' uh, protagonist is traveling to Africa. You know, he hears a sound in his uh, mind. He's a middle-aged man. Eugene Henderson, that is his name. He hears a voice in his mind that says, I want, I want, I want. And then he's traveling to Africa. He's undergoing some adventures there. He's inv getting involved with tribes. And in one of these adventures, he even becomes like the reign king of those tribal people. And at the end, he is finding fulfillment in life. So all these novels of Saul Bellow are like a quest. The protagonist is on a journey towards fulfillment. Did you see that uh, recurring pattern in his novels? Then there is a very famous novel, Herzog, from 1964. Again, you have a middle-aged and troubled protagonist. And at the beginning of the novel, he's writing letters to everybody he can imagine. To God, to people in his life whom, who are there no more. To uh, the president, everybody you can imagine. He's writing letters but not sending any of them. These letters are a kind of coming to terms with his reality. And these letters present his fragmented reflections. So this is Moses Herzog. He's middle-aged. But it, it is a kind of adolescence when he's uh, getting a self-realization. It's a journey to discover his own self. Uh, at the beginning of the journey, he's undergoing an emotional and spiritual paralysis. But towards the end, he is uh, coming to terms with itself. His need to restore some kind of order, that is what is driving him. Another novel that came in 1970 is Mr. Samler's Planet. Arthur Samler is a septuagenarian. He's a 70-year-old man and he's one-eyed. And uh, he is reflecting on the life around him with his one good eye. So this man has lots of uh, horrible experiences in the past. He's a Holocaust survivor and also an academic. Uh, and his reflections on the society around him, the sufferings of the human beings and the human souls, around him. That is the main focus of the novel, Mr. Sandler's Planet. Am I boring you with all the stories? Is it interesting? The greatest interesting thing comes when you read extra about all these stories, make your own notes about it. And then in the exam, they are asking, like uh, shooting you from every side. They are asking questions like this, 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 this from every side. And you are like a very expert warrior able to uh, face all these questions. Remember that end, assistant professors, you cannot be lazy, you cannot take it for granted, study, okay? Right, so now I hope you are rejuvenated. We will talk about another very famous uh, novel of our uh, Saul Bellow, that is Humboldt's Gift. Humboldt in this novel, Humboldt Fleischer is a failed writer. He has had lots of mistakes in his life, he has done and he has failed miserably. He has gone into drinking and women and indulgent life. And his story is told to us by Charlie Citrine. Now, Charlie Citrine is another writer who is on the path of failure. He is also suffering many evils himself. In this exploitative 20th century world, the capitalistic, materialistic Western culture, artists like Humboldt, Fleischer and Charlie Citrine are destroyed. But Charlie Citrine is learning something from Humboldt Fleischer. That is a gift that he's getting from him. While he writes about Humboldt Fleischer, he knows how not to be like Humboldt Fleischer. This is also a Roman eclef because there are so many characters, so many real life artists who just got destroyed like that, uh, about whom Saul Bellow is actually writing. This is uh, the last novel that I'm going to tell you about Saul Bellow. Uh, next is Grace Paley. Have you heard her? She is also a very important short story writer and novelist. She has written poetry also. Got Pulitzer Prize for her collected short stories. Grace Paley 
uh, another Jewish writer, feminist also. And then we have Ellie Weasel, Nobel laureate as well. But he got Nobel Prize not for literature. Can you guess for what? Could it be science? Could it be something else? It is Nobel Prize for peace. This man, Eli Wiesel, was also a Holocaust survivor. He was actually there in the concentration camps. And about his heart-rending experiences, he wrote the Night Trilogy. Night, Dawn and Day. These are the three novels of Night Trilogy. Very, very uh, realistic depiction of the concentration camps and the Holocaust. So heart-rending. And then there is a man who died recently in 2018. Philip Roth. Philip Roth is also a Jewish writer. He was born in Newark in New Jersey. And like all Jewish writers, he wrote intensely autobiographical novels. There are two characters who keep recurring in his novels. One is Nathan Zuckerman. The other is David Capiche. Now, Philip Roth has written many self-reflexive postmodern novels such as, can I read out from the encyclopedia? This is volume 2. Uh, Goodbye Columbus and Five Short Stories. Port Noise Complained. Port Noise Complained is about a Jewish bachelor. He has done many mistakes in his life and he is confessing to a psychiatrist. Port Noise Complained. Then there is American Pastoral. It is a Pulitzer Prize winning novel. 1997 novel Nathan Zuckerman is meeting a friend Jerry Lebov Jerry Lebov is talking about his brother Seymour Lebov who is called Swede Seymour and his wife or Swede and his wife are devastated when their dear daughter Mary turns to terrorism and uh, political activity because she was so furious with the condition of 20th century culture and politics Are, you must know this already because there is a movie American Pastoral. I think it's in Netflix. Have you watched it? You should. Whenever there is a movie, an adaptation based on a novel, do watch it. Because that's the easiest way to remember the theme. I have watched it. You won't believe this. Uh, I watched it the day before I had a surgery. Recently I had a surgery and the day before I watched it and that horrible violence and that terrifying situation of 21st, 20th century culture I found strangely analogous to my own surgery that was going to happen the next day. Will you remember now? This you can take as a code to remember. American Pastoral by Philip Roth. And then there is, if you are talking about Holocaust literature, there is one novel that you cannot avoid mentioning. It is not by a Holocaust writer. He is not even a Jew, but the book is very famous. William's Tyrant's Sophie's Choice. Now guys, there are in fact some Jewish writers like um, Henry Miller, then there is our um, J.D. Salinger. They are not considered uh, Jewish writers, okay? They are just American postmodern writers because they did not um, write about Jewish experience. Now William Tyrant is a non-Jewish writer who wrote about Jewish experience. So Sophie's Choice uh, presents a narrator. His name is Stingo. He is a would-be novelist. He is aspiring to be, to be a novelist. And he meets a couple, Nathan, uh, Lando and Sophie. And Stingo gets attracted to Sophie. Eventually he comes to understand that Nathan is a psychopath and Sophie is having a terrible life with him. And he also understands that Sophie does not want to uh, go with Stingo or save herself or anything because she's suffering from a hidden guilt. She was there in the concentration camps. She had a seven-year-old daughter and she sent that daughter to death in the concentration camps. When a mad, you know, uh, a Nazi doctor asked her to choose between her son and doc daughter, Sophie chose her daughter, sent her to death and she saved her son's life. Because of that, she's suffering so much from guilt. And then you know what happens? She commits suicide with her partner, Nathan Lando. Even though he was a horrible man, she didn't want to escape from him. It was like a punishment for her. It's a very powerful novel, guys, and a very good movie also. So in a nutshell, I've told you a lot about the Jewish-American writers. Uh, if you want, you can 
uh, think of getting our encyclopedia and if not read on your own remember all these are very important areas some of you may find research topics also from here and you will get lots of questions in the exams from these topics are you loving this series that we're doing please share with your friends subscribe and like the video if you like it it'll be a great help to all of us thank you very much bye bye